Alrighty then, back once again for another reaction. This time it's Ruby, Volume 4, Chapter 8, A Much Needed Talk. And I may have derped a little bit at the end of the previous episode, which is understandable because a huge bomb got dropped in the form of a scorpion tail getting slashed straight across uh, Crow's side. Yeah. So, I have no idea if there was a paralyzing agent in that or if he is mortally poisoned and needs some help fast. I'd assume with the drama of the scene that that's exactly what's happening because um, he didn't look good at all. If it was simply paralysis he'd like be in a state of uh, discomfort slash immobility but with how it's weakening it I, th I think that's poison poison and that's bad. What's interesting to me is that he uh, wanted to uh, stab Ruby with it, yet he was meant to bring her back alive. So that makes me think he can either control the dosage, you know, or the potency, uh, uh, or Salem has the antidote that, you know, if he got her back in time, she could be saved. Uh, or he could have different kinds of poisons. He could have a paralyzing poison, a poison poison, a sleep poison, whatever. I, I, I don't know. You see, Faunus aren't strictly like their animal counterpart. As in, I'm sure you could bend some rules and say, well, they're a fictional race, so we can pull some liberties here and there. You, you, know, you never know when a series might do that, but I think it is exactly as it looks uh, that Crow is poisoned and they're going to have to get him some treatment somehow. I do think this means he'll be out of commission for the rest of the volume. This is a convenient way of removing Team Ranger's safety net. And now Crow is the one that needs protecting. <laughs> this has become an escort mission. <laughs> But what interests me is that I think Crow is going to be the one giving this much needed talk. Now I was confused at first in the uh, last episode, which is what I started to say when he said what's your favourite fairy tale? You know, at first I was thinking, uh, well that's what Ozpin said to Pyrrha. And now it's dawned on me that he was talking about how he's got to pick up where Oz left off from. And he's now thinking this is a similar situation where the young girl wants answers about a serious situation that she needs to be in the loop of. And just basically brings it back around as like a little joke to himself. What's your favourite fairy tale? Like, he, he's imitating Ozpin, as in, he's finally going to tell Ruby about all this Salem business, and what all this shady crap's about. So, yeah, this is Crow coming clean about the deeper plot that's going on, that's what I think. And I don't know why I didn't immediately assume that in the previous episode, aside from the fact that, as I said, I was probably just so shocked that Crow was wounded. I'm sure that many other people made that mistake as well, so... Oh, I don't even have any predictions for this. A much-needed talk makes it sound like it's going to be very much focused on Crow and Ranger, catching up and digesting what's just happened and how Crow is going to be taken from here. So, without any further ado, I would very much like to watch how this goes down. Yeah, that was a campfire I heard. Good. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Drink away <Hey>. the pain. <laughs> no questions? Of course we have questions. This is just a lot to take in. Understandable. Sure, of course. I love the lighting. So these... Maidens... They're powerful fighters that don't need dust to use magic. Oh, yeah. he's telling the exact yeah. same Where story. Yep, always. Which means that right, whenever right. one of them dies, the power transfers to someone. I forgot female. that they'd have never they heard of the maidens. Whoever <sighs> is in their thoughts last. Important distinction. Best option, it's someone we can trust. Regardless, their souls become combined, in a way. And that's what you were trying to do to Pyrrha. The night the tower fell. You were trying to turn her into one of them. 
The previous Fall Maiden, Amber, had been attacked. She was young and experienced. And her assailant, who we now know as Cinder, oh, somehow so managed an excuse to steal for how she lost. <laughs> but not all of it. We were afraid that if we didn't do something, the rest would go to her as well. So you forced it on Kira? We didn't force anything. We That's what she came to you about, and you didn't pick up on the context. Chose. You were there. You heard her. He's got you there. I'm sorry, John. It's just going to take him a while to accept it. That guy, Tyrion. Why was he after me? <sighs> because of what you did to Cinder. <laughs> You definitely painted a target on your back with what you did at Beacon. I told you having silver eyes is a rare trait. And the fact that you're someone that was able to use them seems to have upset some very powerful people. Not many people <laughs> know about the silver eyes. But those that do aren't very happy that one has surfaced. That's why Because it's a powerful an threat. <laughs> wanted to make sure you were safe. All of you. Well, then, why not just travel with us? It seems like that would have been way easier. <laughs> what the fans were saying. Great. Look, I wouldn't put it like that. It's complicated. What is all of this? Ruby's being hunted. The schools are being attacked. All for what? What is the point of all of this? Will you just tell us what's going on? <sighs> would you sit down? You're stressing <laughs> me out, kid. Not well, many people are super religious these days. This is going about as well as I expected. This world's been around for a long time. In a long good way. that people have created <laughs> dozens of gods. But if you believe Ozpin, two of them are actually real. Ooh. They were brothers. The older sibling, the god of light, found joy uh -huh. in creating forces of life. Meanwhile, the younger brother... The god of darkness spent his time creating forces of destruction. As you so did can he imagine, create the Grim? They both had pretty different ideas about how things should go. The older one would spend his days creating water, plants, wildlife. And at night, his brother would wake to see all the things that the elder had made and become <laughs> disgusted. To counteract his brother's creations, the god of darkness brought drought, fire, famine. All that oh, I see. Rid that kind life. of angle. Life always returned. So one night... But death is a part of the circle of life. Something that shared his innate desire to destroy anything and everything. Oh, no way! I guessed it right out of the bat! <laughs> the older brother had finally had enough. Am I the earliest? Tell me. Knowing that their feud couldn't last like this forever... He proposed that they make one final creation together. Something uh -huh. they could both be proud of. Their masterpiece. The younger brother agreed. And that was... This last great creation would be given the power to both create and destroy be given the gift of knowledge oh, scar. so that he could learn about itself and the world around it. <laughs> and most importantly, it would be given the power to choose. To have free will to take everything it had learned and decide which path to follow. The path of mm -hmm. light or the path of darkness. Alignment check. <laughs> and that is how humanity came to be. But what does that have to do with us? Well, <laughs> that's the kicker. See, the four gifts to mankind, knowledge, creation, destruction, uh -huh. and choice, aren't just metaphorical. Each of them exists in a physical form, left behind by the gods before they abandon Remnant. And each of them is extraordinarily powerful. If someone were to collect all four, they'd be able to change the world. That's exactly what the enemy wants. 
The Huntsman Academies were created to train generations of humanity's protectors, but they also serve another purpose, guarding the relics. When Ozpin's predecessor founded the schools, he built them around the relics to act as a fortress. Not okay. only would they be easier to defend, but they would be constantly surrounded by trained warriors. The hope was that hiding the relics would keep mankind from using them against itself. And, of course, keeping them out of her reach. This is like another world of Remnant. I'm trying to pay attention. So, yeah. <laughs> there's that. Her. You mean Salem? That's right. Not much mm. is known about her, and quite frankly, that's not what matters. What matters right now is that she wants the relics. And if she gets them, it's not going to end well. As you said, we're all gonna die. <laughs> oh, nice to you know, check back in with Blake. You can always go in and say hi. <laughs> I don't want to bother him. A father's never too busy for his daughter. Not all of my friends would agree with you on that. Here. What? Where are you going? You've never been very talkative, but that boy you brought home loves to run his mouth. I yeah, he does. More about the adventures of Team Ruby. Hey, <laughs> is that you, dear? It's okay. <laughs> Just go for it. Uh, hey, Dad. Blake. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. I. Please. Well, I suppose it's Chieftain. I assume that's all paperwork to do with that. Don't worry, I've got it. Sit down, sit down. I don't want to keep you if you're. <laughs> Nonsense. I've been. I love that chair shuffle. <laughs> you still take sugar, right? Oh, actually, uh. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. It's fine. <laughs> oh, here, take Reminds this. Reminds me one. of Ruby. No, really, Five it's, sugars? It's no big deal. <laughs> you sure? Positive. Old habits, I suppose. Mm. Might want to let it cool. Right. <laughs> so, is it uh, warm in Vale? Huh? It just. This place seems, like seems her warmer. Doesn't cover very much. It covers plenty. I mean, <laughs> a little more armor might help, don't you think? <laughs> I'm fine. I don't need armor. I can look after myself. I... <sighs> I know you can. I'm sorry. To finish my thought, this place seems quite tropical. Why? I think it seems warmer. <laughs> Why would you say that? Sweetheart, what's wrong? What did I say? How can you still love me after what I did? Oh, Blake. Oh, your mother and I will always love you. You were right. I shouted at you and yelled at you, but you were right. I called you cowards. It's okay. I should have left the White Fang with you and Mom. I should have listened to you and I'm Forget sorry. that world of Remnant. I'm this so is the best so part of the episode. Blake, it's fine. We never held anything against you. And I never Ugh. feared you would fail. I held it together, but that almost made me cry. I feared was that you would fall down the wrong path. And I am so proud to see you have it. But I did. It was... And you pulled yourself out. Yes, you that is back. the most important part. That she left. And even fewer that have the courage to face their demons again. Fuck your shit, Tank, Adam. Mountain Train Blood. detached, I'm Peter, gone. You confronted the White Fang time after time. I didn't do it alone. No, you didn't. Which is why I wanted to ask you. Why did you leave Vale? Why did you leave your friends behind? You were attacked. I... And threatened. 
Son? Oh, whoa! <laughs> this isn't the bathroom! Uh, I'm gonna be going! Sorry to interrupt you this Snoop. family moment! <laughs> I really don't like you. <laughs> well, right. if it wasn't apparent before, it is now. There really is this crazy evil being behind these attacks, not just some thugs trying to become powerful. Why doesn't the world know? Why isn't Atlas going after them or Mistral? And why aren't we in more of a hurry to get to Haven? Shouldn't we be getting them a message? What if they're next? They are Head next, according to there, Salem. What happened to Beacon? He's not dumb. He'll be on his guard. Besides, it takes time to mobilize forces like that. Do you really think they planned out that attack on Beacon overnight? And to answer your question, it's the <laughs> same reason we keep quiet about the Maidens. If the whole world knew about the relics, about Salem, it would be chaos. We'd have another great war on our hands, and this time, you'd have to fight. <laughs> Look, I had the same questions, too. But Oz Penn always put his foot down. We can't cause a panic. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. Salem's smart. She works from the shadows, using others to get what she wants, so that when it comes time to place the blame, we can only point at each other. She's trying to divide us, humanity. Okay. So far, she's done a pretty damn good job. I would say so. All right. So, what should we do? Well, it doesn't look like the poison's attacking him any further, I which surprises really me. Ospen has put a lot of trust in the headmasters. Like I said, the schools are an important part of stopping Salem. Atlas is going to be on high alert after the last attack, and Vacuo is, well, Vacuo. <laughs> it would be hard to hire thieves and scoundrels to fight against other thieves and scoundrels. That is true. Like that, add in the fact that Cinder and her crew claim to be from Haven, and I think it's likely the next target. So, it is. We're on our way to the headmaster. I haven't heard from him in a while. And Ospin wants attack. Oscar to go to Haven. I'm hoping he has the answers. All right, I think it's time you kids got some sleep. Uncle Crow? Yeah? This is a lot to take in. And it all sounds mm. crazy, but I'm willing to do whatever I can to help. <sighs> because I trust you. <sighs> but why couldn't you trust me? Why couldn't you just travel with us instead of all of this secrecy and... and Look. This has nothing to do with trust. I... It's a long story, okay? Seriously? That will take How another campfire. <laughs> but you know the crows are a sign of bad luck. Old superstition. But it's how I got my name. See, people did talk people about can this. Some people absorb electricity, and some people can burst into rose petals. <laughs> some people are just born unlucky. My semblance isn't like most. It's not exactly something I do. It's always there, whether I like it or not. I bring misfortune. I love this fire. <laughs> I guess you could call me a bad luck charm. Comes in real handy when I'm fighting an enemy. But it makes it a little hard on friends. Oh, fit. Crow. Well, you are just a real bundle of help, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, come on, John. <laughs> Where are you going? You're in an understandable frame of mind, walk. but your remarks come There's off as douchey, <laughs> which I guess is what they're going for. Not tonight. 
Wow. Ah. Uh. No concept of privacy, <laughs> no respect for personal space. I'm sorry, okay? Ow, I'm sorry. Ugh. Look, I promise it was important. I needed to find you to talk to you. What, son? What could be so important? I was talking to your mom and she said something weird about the white fang. I'm stopping you right there. But I told you. I'm not here to fight the white fang. I'm not here to fight anyone. I'm here to rest. To figure things out and to see mm -hmm. my family. Your mom said White Fang members don't wear masks in Menagerie. But I saw one at the market yesterday. I even got a picture. Son. Look, I'm trying to help. I don't want your help. <laughs> oh, there was someone watching. Oh. A freaking ninja? A spy. But why would... Hey, wait! <laughs> What's happened? The White Fang is evil, I totally called it, and I'm bringing your daughter back! <laughs> okay! Good luck with that. <laughs> Alright then, that escalated very quickly. <laughs> <sighs> We should probably get moving. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> ah, th there we go. I was wondering. <coughs> I knew it wouldn't be that simple. That is some high grade stuff. Well, that's unfortunate. So, basically, basically, back to square one with that. This does literally nothing to tell us about his chances of pulling through or how he's going to pull through or what this means for his current condition. Every single question we asked when he initially got stung is being asked again. What? <laughs> Because <laughs> all this time, with him, like, talking so nonchalantly at the, uh, camp, I, I thought that, okay, it's just knocked him on his ass for a little bit. Like, uh, they, they managed to do whatever treatment they could, bandage him up, he's gonna be fine. Now the poison's acting up, so, <sighs> your guess is as good as mine. I, like, what? <laughs> Literally back to where we were. But aside from that... Uh, it was very interesting, so, so interesting, to just take in that extra World of Remnant-like stuff, the basic origin story, religion of the world, that he's saying is true, because Ozpin says it's true, so that means it is true, because Ozpin's wise, <laughs> but... <sighs> wow. I agree with Ruby, that was a lot to take in. And I do comprehend it, uh, I just haven't memorized it enough to repeat it. But it was an interesting story, and I am happy that I instantly called that the man that could create dark things. Oh, he made the grim, didn't he? <laughs> and, it, and it came true. Uh, uh, what else happened? Uh, Blake, oh, she broke my heart and then some. I, I didn't expect that. <sighs> Uh, that is going to be the moment most worthy of reaction uh, in viewing other people. Th that's what I'm most going to be looking forward to. The, Blake coming out with that heartbreaking question. I, I, I expect to see plenty of people uh, crying over this. Because I, I nearly did. I Because it's been like uh, the majority of a year maybe since Pyrrha died and I had to stop my reaction to the finale. It was in the afterthoughts but because I just started crying after processing her death. But now it's been so long 
it's like I've had a little bit of difficulty um, getting back on the same emotional investment level and I've just been enjoying it from a storytelling and entertainment perspective but Weiss's outburst at the dinner party uh, struck me pretty deep and this did as well as someone who places family very highly that's why I love the shit out of episode 4 this kind of thing is right up my street. It's powerful and deep and striking to someone with like me, and it was so well done. And God damn it, son, you are funny, but you can't just ruin moments like that. Come on, come on, man, please, please, just, just, just uh, keep it in your pants for five minutes and let a girl have some privacy, okay? Please. Though, to Sun's credit, I shouldn't make a joke like that about him because he was genuinely trying to find the right opportunity to show her that picture of the White Fang member. So, yeah, I do somewhat take that back. For anyone that was about to go mad at me in the comments, I do know he was being serious. I did pay attention. <laughs> but it was... I did want to, like, say aloud, but then because the scene switched, I was then paying attention to that. Uh, sh so she's not interested in anything you have to show her on the phone, but she suddenly is interested to see one right outside. Like, um... You make up your mind, please. <laughs> Unless it was made more immediate and worthy of a response uh, with it being right outside her home because that also places a concern factor on her parents for the surveillance thing what this makes me worry about though especially with how uh, Fennec and his accomplice I can't remember the name of in episode 5 uh, said they were going to inform brother Adam of um, the way they put it he's not my brother but they were going to inform Adam that Blake had come back to Menagerie. I wonder if those people are giving reconnaissance to uh, Adam uh, slash Fennec and that. Basically where I'm going with this is, is Adam going to come looking for Blake on Menagerie? Is that why we still have Blake versus Adam in the opening? Is that what this is leading up to? Especially because she had that, oh no, please get away, look on a pitch. She's not ready for it yet. Like, he, I reckon he might show up, start attacking her, and he's almost disappointed because she doesn't seem to have shown any improvement since before because she's not quite ready, so it makes her skills look dull in comparison or something. You know, one of those, she has to be in the right emotional frame of mind things. They've done a similar kind of thing in One Piece, where the Luffy got absolutely trashed by a villain while in a state of emotional uncertainty, but then as soon as he knew what he had to do and steeled himself to do it, he was like a hundred times stronger, so... <laughs> <sighs> wow. Yeah, so basically, I hope Crow is going to be okay. I repeat everything I said at the start of today's episode I really hope that he's gonna pull through but I reckon he might be sitting this volume out especially now his condition seems to be worsening but at least he was able to drop the exposition before this happened and Blake's family continues to be amazing uh, Blake's dad shot way up in the father rankings I think um, he's about equal with Taiyang they both have different styles of parenting but they're very very awesome dads and, and Taiyang's got that mental strength of getting over his first wife leaving him and his second wife dying and being able to face life with such humour and pulling his disabled girl out of her funk like, I, I think he deserves a lot of credit for what a strong person he is, let alone a father. But this scene right here did so much for Blake's father's character, and I love it so much. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm out of things to say about this episode. Uh, it was phenomenal. I liked it. And I'm going to go binge reactions to this episode. Uh, screw recording anything else tonight. Uh, it's getting a bit late anyway. Uh, 
I will get to recording uh, 9 and 10, um, maybe 11 tomorrow, uh, depends how much time I have, because uh, then I want to be able to do 12 on its own, the finale. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I shall see you guys next time.